Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the uh, podcast. If you're listening and you're new, welcome. If you're watching and you're new, welcome too. We, we post these on YouTube, so uh, you might be watching or listening because uh, just people love uh, Hans's handsome face, you know? It's, that's yeah, what it is. He's, now they're telling me I'm a cult leader. So. Yes, he's a cult leader. Recently, he was, <laughs> he was a, cult, a cult leader. I, so. was, I was tossing <laughs> in the bed all night, man. Just you know. I, I knew there was something special about Hans. All these yeah. years that I've known Hans now. I'm so charismatic that I everybody would have. <laughs> I knew there was something special about well, Hans. So we got we to, gotta, we gotta, you know, um, dispel that. I'm charismatic, and I gotta, yes. we, gotta, we gotta make few people mad. Yes, or which, which big, is what's new in Hans's world, kind of thing. Yeah, that's you know, that's like I wake up in the morning, I say, so what am hmm. I gonna say to piss a bunch of people off? This was a. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, you know, you know, you know, hold yeah, on, you, okay. know, uh, you know, you know. Did you see the movie Zorba the Greek? I haven't seen the full movie, but oh God, I man, know you should watch it. But it was a homework for you like two months ago. I know Hans been telling me I gotta watch this. And yeah, uh, there was this movie. That Zorba about, it was about this. Uh, it made a great impression on me. But it was kind of legal in Czechoslovakia, mm -hmm. and we got like a bootleg copy on it, like a sixteen millimeter mm -hmm. or what the heck it was, yeah. a double half sixteen or whatever. Yeah, and it was this projector ch -ch 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 yep. clicking, you know, in the background. Yeah, the the beam of light through the dusty okay. smoky room, right? And we, 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 we got it when I was in college. I said, oh, hey, you've got Zorba the Greek, let's watch it. Yeah. So, and it was, it's a great flick, you know, really good. It's a, it's, they don't make movies like that. You Anthony, know, Anthony Quinn, Quinn yeah. man. Yeah. I don't know the, 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 the hero of the... I mean, Zorba the Greek is a hero, but there was this character who was a the writer, Br British writer. The one that fell in love with And he inherited a coal mine in okay. Greece. He was, okay. he was a writer from England. Yeah. And he, and, and he was kind of low-key kind of guy. I didn't want to rock the boat and mm -hmm. all that. And he met Zorba in this uh, canteen in, uh, uh -huh. in the port there or somewhere. And they start talking. And, and Zorba kind of visioned himself in this guy's life and, uh -huh. and become his manager and all that. And, <laughs> Zorba. <laughs> yeah. And it was great, you know. And I remember, and this is why I'm saying this story, uh, uh, the writer says, you know what? I don't like to, I don't like to have problems. I don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. And Zorba looked at him like bewildered and disgusted. And he says, you don't like problems? Life is problems. What are, how are you going to live if you don't have problems? Yeah. You know? It's true. And that's it, man. You know, if yeah. everything is even, Stephen, eh, you're just a cotton of the century and you can just as well just, just die. Yeah. You know, yeah. rock it a little bit, oh. shake the cages. As long as you, you know, and Hans always, uh, when he says something, there's, there is logic behind it. He's not going to spew something out. That's one thing I know. No, I'm not saying it just to piss people off. No. I'm, I'm trying to say yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to say what I firmly believe is truth. And I was maybe meditating sometimes for decades. Yeah. You know, yeah. like what we are going to talk about today. Well, what are we going to talk about today? Yeah. <laughs> you guys might have sit back on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the question is, I hope I'm going to say the question that's screwed up, but why do you think that, uh, uh, sport training is not real? No. But, no see, I'm going to screw the, up. The, 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 it was, so is, is this sport fake training? Yeah. Is sport fake training? Yes. yes. That's what I want to ask. I mean, yeah. in, in, uh, 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 sport yeah. dog sport, protection yeah. sport. Yeah. So protect is, yeah. Wa yeah. Or exactly. even obedience. Really? Yeah. You know? Is, is it, why is it not the real thing in your opinion? Yeah, it just looks like it, right? Yeah, looks like it from the out, outside of it. So if you're a sport yeah. person right now listening. I have this great dirty joke about it, 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 it looks like it, but I'm not going to Let's keep it, it clear. <laughs> uh, just before you start, Hans, you have to say you've done sport. Yeah, I've done sport. Let's just, let's just say that. I've done a little bit, shouldn't, uh, yeah. and I've done... Yeah. PSA. Okay. And I was second in nationals one year. I don't even remember okay. what year was it, 2005, so I think. It's important to say this. And yeah, Hans doesn't like to say it, but I need to. Well, it's whatever. important. But uh, it's important uh, for the story. You know, yeah. I was second in open class. It was more classes. So in the open class, I yeah. was second. Yeah. And uh, some Malino I won, you know. Mm -hmm. That was. Yeah. But it's okay. You know? yeah. And I said, all right. And I did sport why, you know, several reasons. Uh, yeah. There's some good stuff you can mm -hmm. learn from sport, yeah. you know. And 
second of all, people used to say, Hans, how can you talk about sport? You never even did sport. So I, I, I decided to do PSA and I wasn't that great on it, but I put titles on about okay. three dogs, I think, or so. And, uh, or two, I don't know, three titles on two dogs, I think I put, I, I don't remember, something like that. Okay. And uh, I don't care, right, you yeah, see? But and uh, and uh, they were screwed up dogs I got, you know, and I kind of had to fix them, so I actually make it harder than if I would start from scratch. Mm. And it was fun, good people, good yeah. camaraderie, you mm. know, the PSC crowd is great, you yeah. know. Yeah. But 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 as far as dog training, I have some issues with it, you know. When you won that title, you said you were driving. That's what you told me. Like you were driving, you won that title, and you, and you said to yourself, like, what is that? Kind of how it was I think? Yeah. As the story goes, we'll get yeah. To now me. what? You know what am I? Yeah. But but basically, yeah. why I did it is uh, is to shut these people up. Uh -huh. Who says Hans never did sport, right? Uh -huh. So I decided to PSA because I came kind of like the best sport I could find. Mm -hmm. And I did a little shoot zone too, but not much. And uh, mainly just the training shoot zone. I never titled, you know. Okay. But uh, I did a lot of training and, you know. Yeah. And I did title in PSA, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so I can shut up the people who says, oh, Hans never, you know, put a title yeah. on a dog. So I did, okay. I had like three titles. And yeah. That was good enough for me. Yeah. You know, yeah, and so you, uh, you saw that world. It was, it, well, yeah, I saw that world, and I learned a lot. I learned yeah. a lot, good stuff too, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and but you know, uh, I like the more more the 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 real stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, when I do search and rescue, you know, for example, I've done search and rescue. It was one of the first thing I've done. Mm -hmm. I love search and rescue. Even when I was in Czechoslovakia. I always admired those guys who were doing search and rescue mm -hmm. there. You know, when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. so there's this guy came with this orange sweater. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody it was it was like a god walked into the bar. Everybody, mm -hmm. you know, look at them. You know, and it, it stuck with me. And they had dogs. Mm -hmm. Did search and rescue there in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It was weird. They used like a Saint Bernard's, but, mm -hmm. but they were good. You know, it was different St. Bernard than they yeah. do have now, right? They were much more athletic and stuff. Yeah. And um, and so so I did search and rescue here in the United States. Uh, and uh, when I was working seismic, you know, we were shooting dynamite. Uh, to oil exploration. Oil, yeah. oil exploration. Yeah. And we worked in winter and we tripped some avalanches. And I said, I got to get a dog and get a search and rescue. That's really how I started mm -hmm. with dogs here in the United States. So I got two dogs. I got Timber and Lady from Shallow Shepherds. And uh, they were excellent search and rescue dogs. I remember we were shooting in Utah. And that's what really brought it to fruition. And we were cutting the line across this ball, which was really steep. And you could see the top, the, uh, the, the snow drift blowing over the edge. Mm -hmm. And that thing was like 20, 30 feet high, just giant amount of snow, right? Yeah. And I kind of said, well, it's probably not a good idea to shoot over here, right? Yeah. And because it may slide, yeah. engineering geology, so we did some slides, studied some slides, mm -hmm. it was mainly earth slides, but the principles Concept are the same, same, right? Yeah. And. Um, and 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 I, I advised them not to shoot because I was on survey crew and I was the first one and I knew this, you know. And they shot mm -hmm. because they need the coverage, so they disregarded what I said. Who the heck was I, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they shot and the thing slid and it's like it was a white pine peak, I think it was called, where it happened. And it slid down and it was these giant chunks of snow, size of a box cars, literally. Mm -hmm. And, and and I remember there was this guy. His name was Lombard, and uh, he 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 was he was on the very top, and he was sitting on the the bag with the where the cable heads were, mm -hmm. uh, you know, connected, and the and the bag was uh, covering it. So when it rained, it didn't get wet, you know. So so he was sitting and eating lunch, right? And mm -hmm. they shot the thing, <laughs> and he said. I remember like today it was funny. He said, 
Suddenly, I, 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 I felt this cable just took off from under my ass, <laughs> and I know something is definitely wrong. <laughs> and it was, you know, yeah. it slid giant avalanche, uh -huh. and one of the guys, I forgot his name, his first name was Alex, and he rode one of those boxcar house-size wow. chunks of snow for about a mile or close to a mile down the hill. Wow. Right? And, and, and you know, those chunks of snow, they were so hard that if you would take even steel shovel, you couldn't poke yeah. into it. It was so cool. solid. Yeah. And if you would fell out of those things crush and got between two of them, um, crush them, two of them chunks, you know, it would he would be that cookie. Mm -hmm. And and he rode it all the way down, man, like a surfer, basically. Wow. Just fucking, you know, and I talked to him and I said, so, so what did you, uh, <laughs> what did you think about when you were riding that chunks of snow down the mountain? And he said, I prayed, he said. Yeah. You know, maybe that helped him. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I started doing dogs, search and rescue dogs, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I I didn't know much about it, you know. I just tried to do it and all that. And 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 I saw the. That's what I like. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why I like. I I, I see the um, the real stuff, real police work, real personal protection. Real search and rescue, real detection, you know, like explosive detection or uh, yeah. narcotics detection. I love that. I like to see the, you know, to me, the sport is just for, you know, like an ego almost, or like, you know, I, I don't want to be insulting, but I've done sport, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like, it's like, it's like, uh, People enjoy it, and yeah. it's something it's a good to do. Social thing, something to do on weekend. Yeah, you know, it's a social thing. Yeah, and there's a lot of politics, you know, so it's not really that much yeah. fun. You know, yeah. in a lot of clubs, there's and, that uh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah, there's that, and uh, and so, but I like the real stuff. And when I start mm. doing sport, I realize this is not real. Yeah, right. This is this is just this is just making dogs look good so you can get points. And it wasn't always that way. When Schutzhund started, mm -hmm. it was just a test. Mm -hmm. Test of what? Test of dogs' suitability to be bred because they tested their drives and instincts for obedience, protection, and tracking, mm -hmm. right? For the real stuff. Yeah. Back then. Back then, yeah. You know, for the real stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, there were no even points. Yeah. They didn't reward points. It was either pass or don't pass. Yeah. Right? That's what it was. And uh, so when you pass, they said, okay, now you can breed this dog to, yeah. you know, to, 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 to German Shepherds. You can, it was designed for German Shepherds, basically. Okay. There are other sports designed for different breeds. But so. that's the home of yeah. the... And, uh, and so... But, you know, that's what I'm most familiar with, you know. So, but anyway, it was designed for suitability for the dog to be bred besides breed and some other stuff. Yeah. But but the sport, the title, the dog had to add a title, uh -huh. you know, which was pass or don't pass back then. Okay. Right? Pass, yeah. don't pass. Yeah. And, uh, but then, you know, the ego, again, <laughs> of people kick in. I said, well, but his dog passed, but my dog passed better. Uh-huh. Right? So... So they're selling puppies. Uh, he says, well, his dog passed, so why should I buy from I you see. and not from him? What level? And he says, yeah. my, my dog passed the same test, yeah. but it did better. How? Well, you're just saying that. Yeah. Right? Then so they start doing points. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, and you have 100 points or whatever. I don't know how many it was back then. Right? Yeah. And, and you start getting points. So if you got, you know, 99 points for obedience and 99 for protection and 99 for tracking... Or if you got only eighty, well, yeah. then you can brag and say hey, my dog is better, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how it went, right? And mm -hmm. it was still kind of okay because uh, the training was pretty realistic. All that you can see, you know, if you see some old videos, the dogs don't look that pretty because there's a lot of defense drive based yeah. uh, built into the yeah. training. They were more real, quote unquote. They were more real, dogs. right? Yeah, and 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 so, so then. The points took over the sport and, and become sport. 
before it was test uh-huh. now it become sport uh-huh. for points for points yeah and in order to get points sometimes yeah. you got to do things yeah which don't have any correlation to everyday life mm-hmm. right for example in obedience they found out that it's better to for points it's better to train the dog in drive meaning for treats you know you show him a treat or to and dog goes oh i want mm-hmm. i want a treat i want a... you don't matter anybody could hold that toy yeah. or treat right Has this but, but the dog is in drive so to speak you know i uh, meaning he's all parked up you know and and, and, and prancing and you know Do anything. like a lipid sauna right yeah. <laughs> and uh and, and 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 they look good and they get more points yeah yeah you know uh in tracking they track and they put in every footprint they put cat food so the dog goes foot footprint yeah. to footprint to footprint to footprint and then they start putting the pieces of food further and further apart mm-hmm. right and 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 they want the dog just to follow a footprint for if you do search and rescue yeah. or felony tracking you shouldn't really care if uh yeah uh, 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 okay there's three reasons why the dog will follow the track it's tracking trailing or scenting right tracking is what they do in sport of shoots and from footprints to footprint to footprint to footprint the dog actually gets more points when he puts the nose on every footprint mm-hmm. now uh, trailing is when you walk through the wilderness or somewhere and the wind is blowing your particle of your clothes and skin and your breath and deposits it on terrain trees borders buildings down the wind mm-hmm. sometimes 100 feet away or more mm. so the dog can be completely off track mm-hmm. i mean off trail but he's on track right the mm-hmm. so trail so so i mean from track uh, and he's on trail in other words he's away from the footprints yeah but he still but he follows your order order you know 100 200 feet away yeah. down the wind you yeah. know parallel with where yeah. he walked okay yeah. Yeah. and uh and then you have air scenting where the dog uh, hits a scent cone as the wind is blowing you can imagine it picks up your order and it uh it looks like a funnel mm-hmm. you know if you would see it my dog comes in here after Hans leaves the girl she that's the first thing she does because she smells all the dogs on me right air scent right away up in the yeah, air yeah, well, that's what she does yeah but in yeah. in in in, yeah. in wilderness for example yeah. or in earthquake areas or whatever yeah or in drug detection mm-hmm. you know or or any explosive detection as the wind is picking up the order it it spreads into the cone mm-hmm. right and dog hits the, the scent cone it's called mm-hmm. And hits it, and you can see how he reacts, right? Mm. And and goes zigzag to the source, mm-hmm. right? So that's not fake training, yeah. right? But in sport, in order to make the dog look good, they make you go from footprint to footprint. Forget air scenting, forget trailing. Yeah, got it. Right? Yeah. You gotta do just tracking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I may have messed it up a minute ago. It's tracking footprint to footprint, trailing. Trail can be 100, 200 yeah. feet wide. Okay. And air scenting is a scent cone. Okay. So basically, going from footprint to footprint to footprint has very limited use in real life. Yeah. And again, we have a sportism in search and rescue where the legal eagles from FEMA and all that decided that the dog got to do one or another. That's at least what I've heard. That's how it, I, I know that's how it was. In other words, you have a dog, gotta do, if he's tracking, dog got to do tracking. Uh-huh. He cannot do air scenting or trailing. You know. Why would you limit the dogs? Don't ask me, man. Okay. Yeah. I have no f- so f- I don't know idea. anything about that, but it doesn't even, to a lay doesn't person, it doesn't make sense, doesn't right? Make sense. Doesn't make I'm, sense. Try, I'm trying to make There's sense of it. There's some kind of legal reason, right? Okay. Your dog may get off of the track, uh-huh. and uh, start hitting trail or scent cone. I give you a scenario, you're walking down by the creek through the canyon, mm-hmm. and the victims, so to speak, 
walk all the way to the canyon and then she in oh, J-shape fashion hooked up and start walking on the top of the mm-hmm. rim of the canyon and then I was sitting there and you go below the victim mm-hmm. following the track mm-hmm. but there is an air scent cone mm-hmm. going down the canyon and dog hits it so he will shortcut sometimes several miles yeah. right yeah. and will go up the side of the canyon or the valley yeah. directly to the victim that's a natural thing yeah. which enables the dog to survive because if you want to hunt for animal, is, yeah. you know, you want to do it as most efficiently yeah. as possible. But people in their infinite wisdom decided, because sometimes what happens, the dog will lose the scent cone if the wind stops blowing. Yeah. You know, so now you got to go back to the track. Yeah. And if he's doing tracking uh, and he got to go back to the track, it may, you may waste the time, they will say, the lawyers will say. Because they teach in law school, uh, how to track, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm being <laughs> Yeah, I know. But, but you know, the, so, so you went up the, up this 6,000 or 3,000 slope uh-huh. and the victim is sitting up there maybe uh-huh. and, and, and you're following the scent cone and you lose the scent cone so you got to go back, yeah, back to the, to the track original. and you lost maybe two hours uh-huh. and then you got to follow the track around uh-huh. and, uh, and by then the guy may die and you have a legal issue. Uh-huh. See what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. I see. Right? That's, that's their reasoning behind okay. that. Got it. And personally, you know, I think uh, we have a dogs and they know best how to find something. It's like the nose. long leash concept. Right, you right. say, don't, so, why are you leading the dog with the long leash? So don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't interfere with the dog. Yeah, right? the they dog. know best how to do it. Yeah. And no, it's not 100%. Yeah, nothing right? is. But, but, you know, the, 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 the attorneys, they will say, they will say, yeah, but we want, if, if, if we say this dog was just trained tracking, you cannot challenge it in court. Okay. Right? Because that's what he was doing. Tracking. Right? Tracking. It was trained in, yeah. Yeah. And then you have a different dog who will do just air scenting, right? Uh-huh. You know. It, 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 it's complex. Personally, yeah. you know, I, I, I go along with the dog, which I like to say. Yeah. And, um, and I want the dog to, uh, to do his magic. Mm-hmm. And I try not to interfere with the dog unless I absolutely have to. Yeah. Right? Like, f- f- what would that be? Like, if I see the dog lost uh, the track and it's completely confused and, you know. Yeah. So I'll take him back to the last point. I yeah. know he was tracking and mm-hmm. put him there on the yeah. track. That's how I would help, right, okay. for example. But that happens very rarely. Mm-hmm. Experienced dog will do it on its own. Yeah. You know, so that's a real tracking. Now you have the fake tracking for the points yeah. where the dog go from footprint to footprint and they judge how many times the dog deviates 12 uh-huh. inches from the track and he loses point here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because it's all about points. It's not about tracking. Yeah. Right? If it was, it, they wouldn't do it like yeah. that. Yeah. And you see like Odin, for example, he genetically, yeah, Odin, yeah. he, you take him out of the car and he Always. puts the nose on the ground and... And, and he, 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 he just never lifts it up. If when we do protection, he lifts it up, but then yeah. you go right back. Yeah, he does, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's one of the dogs. That's, and that's genetic yeah. predisposition yeah. for that. Yeah. And, and, and uh, so that's good, but we want other dog also do air sending. We don't want him to be hooked on just, and trailing, you know. We yeah. don't want him to be just hooked up on one of those three things, which yeah. that's what the sport promotes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's fake training. Yeah. Right? Because it's not, it doesn't have correlation direct uh, benefit in real life yeah yeah use uh, for working dog for real working real dog. Working you know the sport people yeah. they try they like to call their dogs working dogs but they're not working dogs they're sport dogs yeah you know and it's a profound difference yeah of yeah. course yeah. yeah and and then uh, going to protection for example almost all exercises are fake over there right First of all, the dog in sport is taught from puppyhood to target the equipment. Yep. Right. Now that's good because, partially good, you know, because you don't want the dog to bite the helper in the leg. Yeah. You want to bite him in the sleeve. And and Hans said it's good, but I just big asterisk there, good for if you want sport. Right, right. If you want sport, right, yeah. Yeah. It's in the realm of sport. It's necessary and good. Yeah. yeah. Because if you would put there like uh, Holchichka, my dog, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. she would bit the decoy first in the leg and then and she then, would bit him in the shoulder. Yeah, right? 
<laughs> right? Yeah. And, 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 and then sport people see it, they say, oh, that's wrong. That's a, yeah, it's wrong for your <laughs> for, points. Yeah, for I your, understand that. Yeah. But for real life, if I send, you know, anyway. There's no fair fight. Right. There, there shouldn't be. You know, if you, how do they say it? If you find yourself in fair fight, you need to reconsider your tactics. Tactics, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reevaluate your tactics. Should be a shirt. Huh? Yeah. That's a good way. yeah. So um, just try to. Say some key points here. That's why, I'm, 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 as a layperson, I'm sitting here. I've been with Hans for two years. I'm just trying to make sure. I know we had discussion. I, I'm, I'm looking at this also from the outside. That's why I'm just interviewing. Sorry, Hans, just to make sure that when they're listening, like what you, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, you know, yeah. yeah. So well, I apologize if I you gotta, jump in. Yeah. You gotta look at my video, not yeah. not point A B C D, but you gotta look at it the like a con conglomerate, the, like yeah, like a conglomerate. conglomerate. You gotta, you gotta, you yeah. gotta you gotta watch it all before you can make your opinion. Yeah, about, yeah. You know. So I'm I'm a I'm a green person here yeah, sitting. Yeah, yeah. That's that's me. For well, the anyway, yeah. so don't interrupt me. Then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just kidding. No, no, yeah. no listen, listen. Yeah. It's 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 so so in 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 sport, yeah. they teach the dog to target the equipment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't and 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 in sport the helper is a buddy with the dog who brings him his toy. That's yeah. what the sleeve is. Yeah. That's when you see when the dog bites in it and do well, the helper drops the sleeve and the dog carries it around like a, uh, in a victory lap, like a truck. Or they cut the video right there. Well, but, yeah. but that's, that, that's yeah. what it is yeah. uh, in sport yeah. all about. In real life, yeah. And, yeah. you know, really nothing wrong with that as long as it's sport, right? I yeah. mean, there are some wrong things about it, which I will conclude a little later. Uh, but but it, it has nothing to do with protection, yep. right? It's just the dog performs what I like to derogatorily call circus tricks, which looks like protection, but it's not <laughs> protection. Dog is retrieving his toy, which just happens to be the sleeve, okay, on his buddy's, which is the helper, arm, right? It's yep. fake, total fake. Yep. You take that very same dog... Somebody kicks your door in, and you aim him on him, dog at best will run, if you hear the command, he may run towards the bad guy, and he see no sleeve, and he will lose the interest. Now, some dogs genetically will attack that guy anyway, right? Even so they train yeah. the, the, the sport to target the equipment. But those dogs uh, do it despite of the training and not because of the training. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about genetics here. We're talking about the training, yeah. right? So, so you 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 know. <clears throat> now, what happened after you know? If we continue in the history, so first it was a test, no points, then points, then egos, then what? I get more points, mm -hmm. and which led to you know you have the reality here and the fake going further and further away from the reality. Yeah. You know, yeah, and uh, I hear the word uh, with the sports people, the preciseness. Yeah, precision. I hear this yeah, precision. precision. That's yeah. what I hear, hear hear a lot. Yeah, they train which, well because in because in sport, that's especially on their higher levels. Like when I was watching Buddy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, competing, <coughs> you know, and 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 they judge literally how many times per second the dog barks in hold and bark, right? Well, woof, woof, woof. Woof, woof. And if the dog does woof, 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 they're losing points. They do. Okay. And, I, and, and they even judge if the dog is perfectly straight, including his tail, when he faces the decoy. Yeah. If his tail is a little bit off, they lose a point. I mean, that's on in the higher levels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, because those dogs are trained so precisely yeah. that there is so little to judge. Yeah. Right? And the motivation then it's with toys and treats and stuff and has nothing to do with defense, right, which is important in real protection, right? Um, because and so, so the sport people, they basically want to totally eliminate any kind of defense or natural protectiveness from this endeavor of sport because in defense the dog is fighting for real and he doesn't look, it doesn't look pretty, mm -hmm. you know? And if he doesn't look pretty, you're not losing points, so they don't want it. Mm -hmm. So now what happens is the breeders are catering 
to this and they breed dogs which have zero or or, or are trying uh, so far they didn't completely succeed it but they're trying to breed dogs which is almost zero natural protectiveness and defense drive mm-hmm. you know uh it's like a dirty word you know defense and uh and they basically destroying the breed that's my problem with the sport yeah right you have it's not you don't have a problem with doing sports you're yeah, not you do whatever like, do you whatever. want you know it's a big one too yeah, you, to you do sure. whatever you want but understand the consequence you know before you guys comment on this video <laughs> that's well, i'm trying to just to, to clarify hans do sports if you want to do sports do sports it's yeah do we, sport but yeah but understand that when you're but, selecting and breeding dogs just strictly for sport you are eliminating natural protectiveness of the dog which basically that's what defense drive is all about yeah and and that's why then you go to training what i call sportism which drives people crazy mm-hmm. and so what is sportism sportism is using sport training in real working dogs training okay all right and so so in sport they use they they use prey drive almost 100% yeah. right not not all groups I, i know of groups i always mention this group in portugal which don't do it that way and i i admire them for that yeah and i may put it there a little later into it but um uh but but they <clears throat> So the sportism uses basically the only tools they using is, are in um, uh, from sport the foundational tools right mm-hmm. so they basically train the dog like for sport and then they change that dog into a real protection and they usually use stuff called channeling which was well described in by Jerry Bradshaw in his book uh I will I will give him a plug uh controlled aggression i think it's called that uh-huh. book you know. okay and again i don't agree with what he says but uh, the 90 well 75% of the book is great mm-hmm. the concept is wrong but but the understanding of the dog and stuff is very good you know mm-hmm. i mean i'm saying it's wrong i'm sure he would disagree with me it's just my opinion you know and uh and the problem is <clears throat> with the sportism is that it 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 builds the dog on wrong default i mentioned default periodically yep. and default is what the dog learns first he likes the most does the best and reverts to when under reverts to when under, under stress. stress yeah okay so if you teach the dog to work at first like from a little puppy doing protection based on prey drive then for rest of his life the dog will prefer prey drive in bite work okay uh, you can teach them to switch the prey drive into defense drive and you do it by so called channeling where you put the let's say sleeve between the dog and the helper or the decoy now because decoy is for work protection term and helper is for sport mm-hmm. you know so sport people always correct me ah it's not decoy it's a helper all right so i'm trying to keep the decorum <laughs> uh, uh so 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 they and and the, then the dog is is channeling the prey protection of the prey becomes defense you know so mm-hmm. it, and 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 he's protecting that sleeve Mm-hmm. as as the, the helper or decoy now mm-hmm. trying to steal it mm-hmm. okay and so he channels the aggression on the bad guy on the decoy mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because he protects his sleeve right mm-hmm. the problem with that concept is that it is all about the sleeve so it's all based on prey and yeah, the sleeve is still there the sleeve yeah. is still there even if we pull that sleeve out yeah. Yeah. it's still there look at my dog right yeah. he was trained that way originally not by me yeah He there. does protection superbly well. I mean, real protection. Mm-hmm. But you throw a sleeve there somewhere, he redirects on that sleeve because he has his default. How do you? How do you? Hans is a good illustration of a default. How did you do that? The blanket. 
What? The default is a bunch of blankets. Like you have your default. Oh. I, I just like that illustration. Yeah, you can, you can, uh, default it. is uh, what the dog learns first, right? Right? And, and, and but you, you may not want it, right? You, so if you have a police dog, you don't want him to chase the bad guys with sleeve. You want him to chase the guy without the sleeve, right? Yeah. So you can do it in certain way yeah. so that he will chase the guy without the sleeve also, yeah. right? So you cover the problem, which is like a spike. The problem is a spike. Yeah. And you cover the problem with training, which I would uh, uh, compare it to a blanket. Mm -hmm. you know, so you cover the blanket, that spike, you cover it with blanket. That's your you training not to, not to, not that spike is that sleeve <coughs> yeah. attraction, you know, and you cover it up with the blanket, right? Yeah. And then you can do more training. You can put several blankets over that spike. Mm -hmm. But if you put, if, you, if the dog is being stressed out, we start pushing those blankets, the, bl the, the, the spike will go through all those blankets and suddenly that's all you have again, sticking spike. I'm going to chase the sleeve. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, no. It, right? I love the illustration, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, and so, so we have this fake training in sport where the dog is barking for uh, equipment, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or chasing equipment or whatever, or searching equipment. I've seen, I've seen the way they, they do search the blind. They will hang a <clears throat> tennis ball <laughs> inside of the blind. And uh, the dog is running, they say, they say revere, you know, mm -hmm. and dog runs to that blind. Uh -huh. And um, there's tennis ball, so he picks it up and then he brings it to it and play with it. And then he put the tennis ball in the next blind, next blind. So he runs until it. And he doesn't know which blind it is in, uh -huh. so he runs back and forth uh -huh. looking for tennis ball, right? Yeah. Now, is he doing protection? <laughs> no, he's looking for freaking tennis balls, right? Hanging yeah. on a string. Yeah. And it looks really good because he runs there, and ah, no tennis ball, I gotta go to the other one. Ah, and he does it really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Fake training. Yeah. Right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. For sport, it's okay. You know, you want these tricks, dogs, of which look like oh, protection. Yeah, I'm not gonna stop you or even talk against you, but yeah. but that's not a real thing. Yeah, don't call it that. Well, the real it, thing. yeah, don't whatever. call it the real thing. Yeah, call it whatever you want, but, but don't call it, it the real thing. Yeah, don't call it the real thing. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't emphasize the word real. Yeah, that's why it's Alpine K9. Real. real, right? Yeah. Um, so the original ZVV levels, especially the UE3, uh, there were no blinds. Mm -hmm. They would walk through a town or through the woods, mm -hmm. and you would point the dog to a boulder, and dog would run to that boulder, mm -hmm. and then they would point the dog to a tree and to the barn and to the mm -hmm. uh, haystack, and the dog would run wherever you pointed. It was more real life. And the 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 judge, you didn't you as a handler, you couldn't really practice it, mm -hmm. right? Because because if you do sport. You know, it's perfect setup. Everything is to an inch almost, mm -hmm. or foot. The dog knows it. You know, and yeah. dog knows the pattern, and yeah. he sees the blind and you already start yeah. running like a retard yeah. with it, right? <laughs> but but in the uh, <laughs> but but in 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 in, in real uh, in the ZVV, the original ZVV, yeah. the judge was going with you yeah. with the handler, and he would tell you send the dog to the boulder, and you didn't know, you couldn't practice it. Uh -huh. It was completely. Oh, so this is a foreign place. Like, foreign place. Oh wow! Okay, you yeah, know? there you go. And you you send the dog to the boulder, right? Yeah. And the dog nothing there, so you call him back. Send him to the barn. Mm -hmm. So you send the dog to the barn. Send him to that tree, and he walking through this, and he going back and All forth right, like that's that. More, right? Uh, yeah. Nice. And 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 the dog was never there. You were never there, and the blinds were not blinds, but they yeah. were just a natural occurrences yeah. of trees and boulders. There you go. So, that's that's good. Right. I like that. So that you know that was <laughs> not fake, right? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know that search was not fake. Some people are listening, like I never heard of that. That's a, like, yeah. Well, are you sure about that? Even, yeah, I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you and, sure and, about and, and you know um, the, the, the 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 these days it's they don't do that either right, anymore, unfortunately. No, you know, I never just even degenerated seen it. again into sport, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, and, and, and so you have the biting, you know, for sleeve or searching. 
for tennis balls instead of for men. Yeah. And a pattern which is predetermined by the rules and rule yeah. book already written down, everything. Yeah. I like about PSA that a lot of those scenarios were completely green. Uh -huh. And you never know what you're going to get. So you uh -huh. could not prepare yourself. Okay. That was what I liked about PSA. Mm -hmm. It was more... Yeah. Yeah, real. it was... Uh, it was it was more. It was also based on prey, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember Joe Morris once says, "Oh, yeah, I'm working with one of your dogs," and and I remember like today he put his hand on his face and he says, "She is so defensive, like if it would be a bad thing, right?" Yeah. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm. You know, so so what I'm talking about, I, I I want the dog to be for real. And the original sport of Schutzhund was designed to test for real. Even so, it was not real by itself. The exercises was set up in a way that they would test the genetic propensity for the real stuff, mm -hmm. ability, you yeah. know, for real. the real stuff. Yeah. Okay. And it worked pretty good. I well, mean, in the beginning, it, it, yeah, there was that, a reason well, for yeah, doing it. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, yeah. but unfortunately, you know, somebody says, why yeah. don't you start your own sport? Hey, I'm too I'm old for it. I'm a bad organizer. You know, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not the guy who will start new sport. I yeah. should have. It crossed my mind a few times, but, um, yeah. but then again, it already has a name sport in it and we have a problem, right? Yeah. The name itself, it has sport. Yeah, I was so going to design a test where, you know, civil test. Uh, you civil. Know, like the Chicago police test. Uh -huh. you, know? you should make video on that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah and uh, that's about. an excellent test, by the way. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, how dog reacts, you know, to startle recover and all that. Sweden has an excellent uh, type of uh, competition. Not It's not competition, test. Test. Yeah. You know, I keep saying competition, yeah. but it's wrong. Yeah. It's test. Yeah. You know, you walk through the woods and somebody pulls on the rope and there is this this yeah. thing jumped up like this and look, oh shit. Yeah. You know, and then recovers, you know, and then uh -huh. wanna see what the dog is gonna do. You know, and stuff like that. Yeah, that could be done, stuff like that. It's been done in other countries like Sweden have pretty good system. So these sport dogs basically I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but they would have a, a higher uh failure rate under pressure under when it's a real pressure, uh defensive well, pressure. One of the yeah, that's one of the is that the main, uh, one of the big one of the consequences, consequences. you know that that uh, if you train dog just in prey like in sport yeah right yeah and then and then use it in sportism um, and meaning there is no defense mm -hmm. involved in it the dog is basically using the bite work uh, through prey drive mm -hmm. if you enjoyed this content so far please subscribe to our channel also. Hans has a podcast channel called Dog Training for Life. Check that out so you can listen to the audio version. Then if the dog is um, encounters defense or yeah. situation, like gets kicked or something, yeah, like, you know, and he flips the toggle switch into defense, yeah. the dog doesn't know what to do with yeah. it because he never been in that situation. First of all, we breed that natural protectiveness and defense drive out of him. That's first whammy. Okay. And second whammy is we don't train them for that it's two. in sport. So we have two whammies, uh -huh. you know, it's like like a boxer left, yeah. right, you know. Yeah. And uh, and the dog uh, fails, will yeah. fail. And if it doesn't, you know, it's just because it's a good dog genetically, but the train, it does it despite of the training. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and I think you all also talk about that. Why would you want to leave that window open well, the, 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 a lot of, because people are stuck on stupid, I say it'll just yeah. like that. They just, everybody does it that way. Yeah. You see, when, when, when uh, police dogs become really popular, like in late 70s, early 80s, I believe. In America? In America. America, yeah. Uh, so they got these dogs from Europe, right? Mm -hmm. and the sport this was is interesting, guys. <laughs> yeah, and the sport was already yeah. going here in America, yeah. should and all that. Yeah. It was already going. Yeah. And then these, and, and, and the Americans said, well, we, are, we should use more police dogs, right? But there were some good police dog trainers mm -hmm. yeah. in then those okay. days, yeah. but it's just not enough, right? So now you have this uh, police department in a little town yeah. somewhere in Nebraska or... Yeah. You know, somewhere, yeah. in some, somewhere, somewhere, town. Where, where, a small town. You know, and 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 they don't know how to 
train those dogs, mm -hmm. but they need to work with them. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, I've seen these guys in Shizum Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And their dogs look great. Looks great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's call them. Yeah. And so the Shizum people, they start applying what they knew uh -huh. to these police dogs. Yeah. Right? The channeling and all that yeah. stuff. You know, they start applying it. Yeah. And they start building them on prey and build everything on prey yeah. because the sport is built on prey, right? Yeah. right? Without, and, and it's still <laughs> happening that way. I mean, you know what? I will say real names. Mike Ritlin, you know, big, yeah. uh, trains dog for Secret Service. You know, you see that uh, uh, video, video, famous video yep. of the dude coming, jumping over the fence. They send this Malinois on him and, and this guy kind of kicks him kind of half-ass meek kick glancing I, I think it may not even be having shoes i may be or, yeah. or, or you know, sneakers or, or barefoot and it's like a glancing you know i don't know if he even kicked the dog if he even made a contact and the dog is like whoops and instantly makes a u-turn run yeah, away i saw the video because yeah you can find it on, yeah, you know it's on, the on, internet, on, yeah. on the internet it's there and 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 then they said they're not <laughs> <clears throat> then they send another dog, more mature dog, and he takes yeah. care of it. But still, he bites leg, and the guy's pummeling him, and he holds on again from sport. You gotta hold on in sport. Where when I train dog, I teach them, hey, if you're getting hurt, there, let go and bite somewhere else where you will not get hurt, right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of friction against that, and uh, and that dog is getting pummeled there, but eventually they subdue the guy and all yeah. that. But what I'm saying is. That sportism showed up his ugly face uh, because when the guy kicked the dog, yeah. the dog will uh, flip his toggle switch to defense and he doesn't know what to do with yeah. defense. It's a bre bre breed bred mostly for prey, Malinois, number one. Number two, all the training was always done in prey. So when the dog gets in defense, it's uncharted territory for him. And uh, uh, some dogs, they can handle it, right? Mm -hmm. But very rarely, but they do it despite of the training, not because of the training. Yeah, that's a big one. You know, that's a big... There's other video from Albuquerque where this guy, John Boyd, some homeless guy camping on the side of the city park on the little hill. And make long story short, they try to talk him down. He doesn't want to come down, so they threw a flashbang grenade at him or whatever you call it these days, send this dog at him and dog runs to the guy and he sees this blue backpack or jacket mm -hmm. or something, it's blue, and start trashing it on the ground. Yeah. Completely forgot about that because he was trained that yeah. the protection is about the prey. Yeah. Meaning the sleeve. That's the or reward. The equipment yeah. or the fabric. Yeah. I call it also fabric fetish besides fake training. Yeah. That's so good. we got a few derogatory. <laughs> I've got a few. Well, you know, you got to shake the people out of their stupor yeah. and make them think, you yeah. know. And yeah. I don't know how else to do it besides calling them stupid. Yeah. You know, I, I just, you know, you, you got you to gotta like, wow, what did he just say? You yeah. know, that's what I want, the reaction. Yeah. You know, from in, in their head at least, you know. Yeah, start thinking. You know, start thinking, you know. And... Uh, and that guy got shot because he pulled a knife, and so they shot and killed him right there on the video. You can see it. It's still yeah. there. Albuquerque, look yeah. up Albuquerque, John Boyd. And there's so many different videos of that same thing. And so you got to find the right video because they edited a lot of uh, it. And you know the right video is the one where uh, the dog starts playing with this light blue pack, pack object. It's, it's kind of fuzzy. Uh -huh. Pack or jacket. I don't know what the heck it is. It's blue. Uh -huh. You know, and, and it, he picks it up about yeah. 10 feet or 15 feet in front of the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, or he actually ran to the bad guy and then corner of his eyes, he sees the, uh, the object. Yeah. And returns back to it and start, because it, that's what the, that's what the sport is all about, about the sleeve. Yeah. So, well, I got the sleeve. Yeah. You know, you may say the channeling, you know, from prey to defense, it's about the sleeve. Right, so yeah. why should I be aggressive on him? He's there. The, the thing I want is here, so I'll, I don't. I don't need to fight him. It's right here. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I pick it up. Yeah. And and that's what I was trained. Yeah. Where so that's 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 where the worst case scenario when people get killed. Yeah. 
this is fake training, you know? I mean, that dog from White House, that dog was trained by a special forces guy to protect president of the United States. Yeah. And he failed. Stupidly, not because it would be bad dog, but because the training is wrong, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. and, 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 and it's fake, right? If it would be real, then he would not fail or less likely. Less likely, yeah. Or not for that reason. He might fail for some other reason. Yeah. But, you know, failure is always possible, right? Sure. So, yeah. but, uh, so I'm not saying everything is 100%, right? Mm -hmm. But but they select the dogs for high prey and all that. Yeah. And they say, well, the dog will overcome the stress of the of, of, of the counterattack of the bad guy yeah. against the dog yeah. by his, what they call, fight drive. That's another pet peeve of oh, yeah, fight, fight drive. drive it's yeah. like infinity of definitions of what fight drive is. Yeah. And the, the, the fight drive, in my opinion, is ability of the dog. And I read it, I think, on Lieberg or sometimes ago, but I couldn't find it after that. I guess he took it off. Uh, and I like that. So it, uh, fight drive is uh, the ability of the dog to bring the fight to the enemy yeah. or to the opponent, the yeah. intensity and the distance and the wherewithal and the attitude, yeah. that's a fight drive. And people think that fight drive is only associated with prey drive, but it's actually associated with prey drive or defense drive. Yeah. It's just the ability, if you hunt the deer, to bring it to the prey. And if you protect it against somebody who kicked your door at two o'clock at night, you know, yeah. you want the dog to have a high fight drive for that. Yeah. You know, and they say, well, and Balabanov said that, or at least I was told he said that, is that uh, you train the dog in prey because you, and, and, and Ritland said that. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen, I, I read it in his mm -hmm. book or somewhere I read it, but it, he said that. Yeah. And I, it was on TV when he was talking about it. When they send the dog in attack in prey, they don't want the dog to think that he can be defeated. That's why they go with this tremendous vervethol into the fight, right? And that's what that's why they do it in prey because there is no the dog doesn't know that there he can get killed, yeah. or that he may be as I like Coward. to say challenged negatively by the bad guy. So yeah, everything is cool if it works out, but if the bad guy turns around, kick the dog in the head, suddenly oh it's not fun anymore. I I don't know I can get hurt. Yeah. So why not to train for that? You know? Yeah, why leave that Navy door? SEAL guy doesn't know this. You always train yeah. for the, uh, or Special Forces, I don't know what he was, Ritland. Yeah. Navy SEAL or Special Forces, I don't know. I think Navy SEAL. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, you, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you always train for the least likely, but still possible scenario. And, and, and what's, po what's impossible about a uh, bad guy, you know, especially on drugs or something, you know, or somebody yeah. who is not afraid of dogs. Yeah. You send the dog on me, I'll make your dog miserable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? And there's a lot of people like me yeah. who will fight back. Yeah. Some dogs, some people freeze and, oh, bad, but, you know. But you see videos, they're fighting the dog. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 when the, and, and, and the fight drive go only so far, Yeah. you know. But when the deer kicks the hunting dog five times in the head, maybe the dog says, well, maybe this is not worth it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's interesting because the, the, the uh, like a Navy special, for, uh, Navy SEALs or whatever, special forces guys, they get the training. They yeah. Get, they get that kind of training where they have to. They, right. Promote. Why wouldn't you want to train the dog? Well, that's the, that's the power of brain, being brainwashed by sportism. Yeah. You know, and the problem is that this fake training works a lot. Most of the time than not, it works. Uh -huh. That's why police and all train that way, because it works. Yeah. But but there are situations where it doesn't work, and it would it would work if uh, it was if it would be done the way I'm trying to teach it, you know. So so what would I suggest to do? And that's in sport even today's sport, 
or the real stuff always start the default being defense drive. This is where the this sports is where, people go off. Well, this, right now yeah. they all oh, yeah, are this puking is, on their keyboards yeah. and yeah, stuff this like is that. The moment, this, <laughs> this is the moment where <laughs> the <coughs> comments come in. Yeah. Well, I'm not against prey yeah. drive, right? I'm not against prey drive. You, you need prey drive. Yep. You know, the guy's running so, away. Yep. You need you need dog to chase him. Uh, you you the dog and uh, hit the bad guy in a defense drive, and <coughs> he runs away. That's a relief for the dog. That's his reward. The prey drive is extremely important in protection, but you don't want it to be the default. The default needs to be defense. What do I mean by that? The dog needs to understand that the guy which he's facing is a bad guy, and he want to hurt him. He's not his friend who is bringing him sleeve on the arm. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he needs to know that, and, and then if you want to do sport with that or pray yeah. based training, that's fine, but always start in defense. And, and defense I mean, is the default where you put, and you can make only one first impression. Mm -hmm. And I want my dog's first impression when I tell you, Pozor Dersh, you know, alert attack. That the dog understand the guy over there is is, is a bad guy, yeah. and I need to kick his ass. Yeah. And if he's kicking my ass, the only way I can win is to kick his ass more. The escalation, yeah. you know, that's another topic. That's what Hans. But escalation is really important, right? Yeah. You know, and so you teach the dog to escalate pressure with higher counter pressure yeah. and it can go at infinite to until and this the takes months dead. i mean i see in training these dogs that hans trains you know i sit there you know i i train with hans i mean sitting next to him and trained it takes time like it's not instantaneous it, well that's one of the problems with the um, police you know, work dogs and stuff like that they don't have the time yeah you know they want to pull the dog out of the crate at the airport and yeah ideally and, yeah. and the dog works yeah right well, you can do that, but there's a baggage. Yeah. I like to call it baggage. And it's much harder to run with two duffel bags in each <laughs> arm than without two duffel bags, yeah. right? Yeah. So I prefer to run without duffel bags. Yeah. Right? So it takes a little longer maybe yeah. to teach the dog. But because it's based on bonding and all that. I mean, yeah. I just talked to this girl, man. And she bought this uh, German Shepherd, and the trainer who she was buying the dog from told her she must not bond with the dog. They want it to be like a robot, like a cyborg mm -hmm. kind of unemotional, you know. A screwdriver. You, you, yeah, you, 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 you tell the dog to attack, and he attacks regardless, regardless of who you are to the dog. Yeah. Where I train the dog yeah. to attack because we're part of the team. Yeah. And the the dog is my force multiplier. That's where my video, the yeah. Alpine Cane, uh, uh, Art of War, War yeah. which I'm selling, uh, uh, deals with that. How to back up the dog? Yeah, you know. Yeah, Hans. Hans always, you know, loudly says, "Praise the dog, good boy, good girl." Like, like he says, yeah, "We did and this, it." And, and like, this girl, she yeah. told me they forbade her that don't praise the dog. Yeah. Again, logic. I, I always go back to. Yeah, well, that's the extreme like, stupidity, if you is, ask me. Is, right? There's no but, logic uh, in it whatsoever. And, and I'm not saying yeah. that everybody does it that way, but this is just the extreme on the continuum yeah. of stupidity. Yeah, you take it out. You, yeah, you so drew you it out. It you really draw it out. That's where you're going to end yeah, up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, now, most trainers would say that's nuts. Yeah, that's nuts. But you know, it doesn't but, happen. But but the, the 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 so so I always go with uh, what's not fake. So, okay, you may ask me on conclusion, right, of this. What, what, what's not fake? Fake is not what is natural. If it does not occur in principle, in nature, the way you train, then your training is fake. fake. If it occurs in principle, the way you train, then it is not fake. Simple. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? So... So it, it, Mother Nature uh, uh, endowed the dogs with, uh, is that a good word? Endowed the dogs Endow. with prey and defense, yeah. right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I use words I'm not yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, You know, people say, oh, that, there's no such word. 
And I said, I thought it is. And so I stopped using it, right? <laughs> and then five years later, I read books, there it is. <laughs> So anyway. mother, mother Nature endowed yeah, the dog. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're, they're endowed by nature with prey and defense. Yeah. You have to have So both. use prey and defense. What do we use prey for? Hunting, yeah. chasing, yeah. catching stuff. Yeah. Right? To do what? To kill it and eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is defense? Defense is used in nature for defending oneself. The pack members, the puppies, the hunting territory, the breeding rights. I don't know yeah, what else. Those right? are good ones. <laughs> you know, and you are you are you're part of the pack. I used to call, I like to call it pack of two. Yeah. You know, so so you work like a team. That's why dogs live in the pack. Yeah. Because they are more strong than if they live alone. Why do they follow you everywhere that's why, you go? That's why <laughs> orcas are living in pack. That's why you yeah. know. That's why the pack exists. You are the pack. Use it. Okay. <laughs> you know, for protection and for hunting. I don't care, but use it. Uh, all right. There it is. Calm down, <laughs> No, this was good. This was good. Um, no, this was good. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can add to this. There's always, I mean, Hans can, you know, we can go. <laughs> definitely we can. But yeah. I think you said, you I think on. you said, you said your uh, main point. Or points in this this episode for sure so yeah i always watch the video later and then i say oh shit i yeah. forgot this or i forgot that. we don't script any of this so no this is yeah. all yeah what do they Just call it fly by night fly by no not fly by night uh winging it that's Wing it. it only fi what 50 years of experience <laughs> behind <laughs> it <laughs> by by seat of the pants yeah but you build a pretty good plane in 50 <laughs> years you built it pretty well uh. you know, it's pretty steady Well, yeah. some people don't think so. But, well, you can't yeah. please. You know, you're yeah. not here to please people, so you're just telling your uh, your experiences. That's so. right. I'm talking about what I think. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can take it. Or people leave it. people say to me, "Well, you 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 know you you only think what you think it's true. Well, what do you want me to say? What else can you? <laughs> you know, should I tell you what yeah. I think it's why? But Han says, you know, check it. What is the is a Chinese proverb? Or, yeah, ask thousand people and then make up your own mind. Yeah, do yeah. that. Absolutely. Double check. Don't yeah, listen to you know. me. I'm just a cult yeah. leader. Yeah, he, yeah. He, somebody <laughs> called him a cult leader recently. <laughs> that took me back yesterday. Somebody told That's me a good on one. Facebook. I yeah. kept yeah. cult leader. Yeah, man. So, well, thank you, Hans, for sharing your uh, knowledge again with us. Uh, it's a pleasure, man. Yeah. So it really um, is. Thank you to you too. Yeah, my pleasure sitting here and just kind of soaking it all in. Uh, please subscribe, share. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Share, and share. buy some videos. Buy some videos. So buy Hans, some videos on protection, man. Yeah, Hans has the You know whole, what they should yeah. people buy? I think they could benefit greatly. And I think people don't understand what that video is about, but it, the Alpine K9 are the war. Are the war, yeah. Yeah, it's about when you send the dog on attack yeah. and the dog is fighting your bad guy. Yeah. How to help that dog? It's a good one, yeah. Yeah, that's a you know yeah. I, I I I did judo for like eight years, yeah, and taekwondo and some other so stuff. So you show and, these and basic. So, so I use, use a little tiny part of those martial arts skills. Yeah, how to help the dog? It can help one day. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, the it, dog is fighting for it with his life, and you just what do you do? You just stand there. Yeah. I mean, you see these cops sometimes they don't know what to do, you know, until the, they wait for the guy to cry uncle, right? Yeah. But it's best. But, it, 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 you may want to help the dog, maybe yeah. you know, and that's what that video. Art is. of War. That's the one. Uh, yeah, canine Art of War. Yeah. So go to Alpine Canine Reel, and that video is there, and many other ones. But the personal protection. It's a four-part video series, step by step. Hans shows you how to build a personal protection dog, foundations all the way up. Uh, yeah, me. and the so, obedience, you know, yeah. real obedience, not the fake obedience. Yeah, there's that obe the obedience video too, and uh, we do that every weekend. We start with obedience, and then we do personal protection, but okay. it's always obedience first. No, we always start first with me jibber jabber. Well, there's that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's that. <laughs> so please subscribe, uh, share, and all the good stuff, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take right. care. Thank you, guys.